Hi, I'm GMI DW, and today's episode of the GMI DW show is very special because it's finally Thanksgiving! Now, I'm going to be doing Sigil today just because I feel like it. Now, let's get to the footage. Alright, it's finally time to dedicate an entire video to talking about the great John Romero, a scholar in Doom mapping, so much that he could create the masterpiece Perfect Hatred in only six hours. So what could happen if he was given more time? Sigil is the most recent product of John Romero, and oh boy is it interesting. I did at the end decide to shell out and give John my hard-earned 666 pounds on Sigil with the Buckethead soundtrack. The free version of Sigil comes with the James Paddock's MIDI soundtrack. Of these two soundtracks, I really can't pick a favorite, but for the purposes of this video, I use the James Paddock MIDI so that I can't possibly get copyright struck. Right, YouTube? I'm kidding, I actually did use the Buckethead soundtrack when I played through Sigil the second time. Rather than dedicating an entire video to just Sigil, I also decided I would first start off by talking about the two levels that are based off of E1M4 and E1M8, which are the two only two levels in Knee Deep in the Dead not made by John Romero. With all that said, let's get into this video dedicated to John Romero. John Romero's take on E1M4 is quite an interesting level. Phobos Mission Control actually feels in parts like it could be something straight out of the original Doom, as if the level should actually be in this spot. Anyways, this level has big numbers on the ground that help guide the player through the level. It's definitely a different take than the usual level that fills the E1M4 slot. One noticeable difference is that John Romero put a lot more monsters in this version of the level compared to the original. Another thing about Phobos Mission Control is that John Romero loves to use monster closets to unleash monsters in areas that the player has previously visited. So always look around every corner expecting there to be a monster right around the corner. This level is not too long and for a first time playthrough it really isn't that difficult. For purposes of this video I did pistol start the level since I didn't think it would be too difficult of a level. Full Boss Mission Control made me feel John Romero's creativity in using Doom stock assets to create a great level. One last thing to mention about E1M4B is that this level introduces these cracks in the floor, which will be showing up a lot in this video. Now it's time to move on to... Tech Gone Bad is a pretty big level, which makes sense, since this is a replacement for Phobos Anomaly, which was the boss level for Knee Deep in the Dead. This level has a really nice challenge factor to it, especially when Pizzle starting. The player starts off surrounded by monsters before more monsters teleport in. The first thing that you will probably notice when looking at my footage for E1M8B is the monster count. A whopping 291 monsters, which is almost 300. I checked, and that's a higher monster count than any level in the Ultimate Doom. So basically, in all 37 levels of Ultimate Doom, none of them were able to put this many monsters into the levels. Fighting all these monsters is what really prolongs the level experience. Although it's definitely not a slog to play through. In keeping faithful to episode 1, this level uses only zombie men, shotgun sergeants, imps, pinkies, specters, and introduces the barons near the end of the level. Also, there's no plasma gun or BFG in this level either. Not that either weapon is needed. Honestly, Tech Gone Bad is a way better ending to Knee Deep in the Dead. The ending of E1M8B is really similar to the normal level. Fight two barons waiting at the end and take the exit teleport. Upon entering this teleport, Doomguy proceeds to get absolutely wrecked by the monsters, thus ending Tech Gone Bad. Phobos Mission Control and Tech Gone Bad were both great levels made by John Romero, but they are way smaller achievement compared to what he would make next. Sigil is the most recent product of John Romero, 
Sigil is meant to be an unofficial expansion to the original Doom, taking up the fifth episode slot. The story of Sigil is quite simple, like most other things Doom related. Baphomet has dragged Doom Guy back to hell for a rematch. In hindsight, not his best idea. Before I say anything else, I will be using footage from both of my playthroughs of Sigil. The main reason is that in my first playthrough I forgot to record missions 5, 6, and the secret level. So the footage from my first playthrough has the MIDI soundtrack, and the second playthrough uses Buckethead. That's something I really need to talk about before I get to the levels. The music of Sigil. As I said before, Sigil comes with two soundtracks, imagine that, both of which are extremely awesome. The free soundtrack made by James Paddock is a MIDI soundtrack that is just great to listen to. It clearly has a lot of passion put in the music, and since the Sigil soundtrack, I have begun to pay a lot more attention to Jimmy's work. The soundtrack that I had to buy for 666 pounds, very funny John, was made by some guy called Buckethead. <coughs> G Man. All jokes aside, the Buckethead soundtrack is great rock music and it sounds great. Sivvy put it best. How often does a game come with two good soundtracks? Anyway, lots of people have an opinion on Sigil, and that's great. So today I'm going to give you all my opinion on Sigil. Does it hold up? Is it worth playing in 2021? Do I think my generation, Gen Z, will appreciate the work John Romero has put into making Sigil? To answer the last question, a vast majority of my generation probably only plays modern first person shooters and will definitely not appreciate all the hard work John has put into Sigil. However, I think this mainly because you don't really find people in Gen Z playing retro FPS games. That's enough about the Zoomers, it's time to talk about John Romero's latest creation. Time to get into the levels of Sigil. First up is Baphomet's Domain. Baphomet's Domain is a good start into what is to come into Sigil. It's definitely hard, especially if playing on Ultra Violence. This first level teaches players how, and how John Romero is going to be using light, or rather a lack of light, to work against a player, such as in the first room putting a specter in there with really low light so it's very hard to see this. This level also teaches the player about Sigil's main gimmick, which is the green eye triggers. First, the player is locked in a room with no way of escape. Then the eye trigger is usually noticed and shot, at which opens up a wall revealing the rest of the level. This might not be obvious to some people, but this is an example of good level design. Also should mention secret finding since I somehow messed up talking about secret finding in the last Doom video. So secrets in Doom are leagues better than wall humping in Wolfenstein 3D. I mean, sometimes you have to wall hump, but not for all of the secrets. Sometimes in Doom, you can trigger secret by crossing a certain line in a map referred to as a line death. Well, in Sigil, some secrets can be triggered by the eye triggers, so keep your eyes open for these things. Such as secret number one, which requires some Doom platforming skills. Gives you a rad suit and a soul sphere from it. These items will help with secret number two, which has a secret chain gun. However, the path to get over there is over damaging lava. Well, that was such a long time talking about just one level of Sigil but we still have eight more to go through. Next up in the Sigil roster is Sheol. It's again another great level. There aren't that many monsters and John starts to use more tiny ledges over damaging liquids. It's an interesting mechanic that I hope isn't used as the main gimmick for a whole entire level later on when I talk about Doom 2. Anyways, the first thing you want to do is get the key guarded by the Baron. I recommend Punishment by Death, but you could just run past it. That's boring. I'm already shotgunning barons. I've heard some people, G-Man lives, complain about the ammo in Sigil, but I personally have never found this to be a problem. Ultraviolence does ramp up the enemy count by a lot, which is expected, and even though technically there is less ammo, I never had a problem in dealing with the enemies in Sigil. The main attraction in Sheol, of course, is the Cyber Demon introduction exclusive to Ultraviolence. Avoid his rockets, otherwise he'll turn into bloody mush. After maneuvering around more tight spaces and narrow ledges, you can get to a room filled with cacodemons and barons. However, first I'd recommend telefragging the cyber demon since he can become a problem if not properly dealt with. So to telefrag the cyber demon you have to run into these flame crystals and make sure that the cyber demon is inside of the area where you teleport to. After dealing with Mr. Face Rocket, I recommend picking off the cacodemons and barons from afar since up close they can be devastating. With all that said, and done, another level of Sigil is complete. Cages of the Damned starts off as the most cramped level in Sigil, which makes opening up the rest of the level later on a really cool reveal. 
Another more minor complaint I've heard about Sigil is that there aren't as many rad suits to help get through the hurt floors on Ultra Violence. Personally, I don't find this much of a problem. Ultra Violence is supposed to be hard, and I personally think that the original Doom is way too easy on this difficulty. I even have an easier time pistol starting all the levels in Knife Flesh Consumed compared to some levels in Doom 2. Yes, I am saying that I find Knife Flesh Consumed not too difficult. The point of mentioning this is that I don't feel excluding the rad suits from this level makes it too difficult. Sure, it's annoying walking over the hurt floors, but it's to be expected. This is supposed to be the unofficial fifth episode of Doom, therefore it should be hard. The main gimmick in Cages of the Damned is that once the level opens up, there are a bunch of cages with demons inside them. It's not honestly a hard level, especially if you find the secret over this ledge. It makes the whole level a lot easier. Also, the next part of the level gives you a Berserk Pack so I can partake in my favorite pastime, punching the fuck out of Barons. Barons start to show up a lot from now on, and John Romero doesn't give you as many rockets to deal with them. On my second playthrough sigil, I almost got wrecked by one of the Barons, and I came away with less health than I should have. Maybe Punch Baron isn't quite the game for me, but I'm still gonna play it just because it, I love it. It's so much fun. Anyway, this level ends with a Baron, so it's time to play the game again. Pass of Wretchedness is such an awesome name for a Doom level. The basic gimmick in this one is that there are three paths you can take, and once you complete the Challenge Neath path, then you are awarded with the ability to play the rest of the level. The Choose a Path mechanic isn't a bad idea for a Doom level. In the end, it doesn't matter what order you choose the pass, you'll have to go through all three of the paths to open the three gates, which reveal the next part of the level. The first path is nothing really special, just lots of imps to fight and some narrow ledges, no biggie. The second path is these sinking platforms that the player has to be very fast on. At the end of this section, there are a few monsters guarding the door that when activated, it takes a long time to raise. This seems like an intentional way to stall the player and not have them just run past all the monsters. The third path is the one I hear the most complaining about. It's not that bad until we reach this crusher room. Now I'm going to be quite honest here, this crush room is not as bad as everyone seems to say. The places where the player can stand and not be crushed are clear and easy to see, and overall this section is not even remotely difficult. I don't understand why many think that this section is even hard. After getting through all three of the paths and unlocking three gates, it's finally to go into lava to find a switch to lower walls that reveal two barons? After killing them and hitting a switch, the player has to go into this room which has another baron in it. Another fine ending to another well-designed level. Abaddon's Void is probably my least favorite level in Sigil, which is saying quite a lot since this level is still awesome. However, I'm not getting the same wow factor from this level compared to the other levels in Sigil. The main attraction in Abaddon's Void is the two cyber demons located on the two sides of the map. Don't worry about them until later. The cyber demons show up quite a lot in Sigil, with a total of 7 cyber demons spread across 6 of the 9 levels in Sigil. I personally don't mind there being an uptick in cyber since this is supposed to be episode 5, therefore it should be really hard. Most of Abaddon's void is avoiding the cybers and going through buildings. I have footage of me wandering through this level after going in the building with the two caca demons and just being lost. What the player is supposed to do is see this platform next to this ledge has raised and then go onto that ledge. Most of this level isn't really interesting. After picking up the blue key, the player can finally telefrag the two cybers and then play through a round of Punch Baron. The end of this level is by far the hardest part, and if you're not careful, it will absolutely wreck you. Once again, this level is ending with the now obligatory Barons. Unspeakable Persecution is without a doubt my favorite name for any Doom level. This is the level I feel is talked about a lot, mainly because this level is really, really dark. I don't agree with the statement that Sigil is overly dark, however this one section of the level is supposed to be overly dark. This part doesn't really bother me since the design intention was for it to be overly dark. This level is really well detailed, which goes for Sigil as a whole. However, it's immediately noticeable at the beginning of the level how intricate and finely detailed the floors, walls, and even the ceiling are. For visuals alone, Sigil will get a 10 out of 10 from me. This level isn't bad or anything, however most of this level is not really that interesting until the player reaches the maze. The maze is the most interesting part of Unspeakable Persecution, mainly since there's a cyber demon in the middle of the maze that starts to hunt you down as soon as you enter. I'd recommend killing it as fast as possible since it can still shoot rockets 
at you when you were up on the ledges of the maze. However, remember those eye triggers are still a part of Sigil? Well, in this level, the secret eye trigger opens up the secret level. The secret level, Realm of Iblis, is not a bad secret level. At least I do think it deserves to be hidden with its weird sexual innuendos. Don't think I don't see these holes and sticks. I know the real meaning behind this. John Wayne Gacy Romero. Also, yes, the six can still crush you very easily, so be careful around them. There's a lot of lava in the first area of this level. So much so that in the first area that I go to in the floor is completely filled with lava and I had to run into a side room to get a rad suit. Damn, now that's an interesting level design choice. Almost as interesting as the cyber demon at the end. From now until the end of Sigil, there's at least one cyber demon in every single map. I still don't have the goddamn BFG yet. I know that there's one in the 6th level, but I didn't find it in either of my two playthroughs. Cyber demon in this level is hard if you try to fight it in that tiny arena. I would recommend stepping out of the arena and killing him from afar. The ending is another round of Punch Baron. After all of that, it's time to go to the penultimate level. Nightmare Underworld is a really, really long and somewhat brutal level. Its beginning is not really that hard, but everything after that is very difficult. The only other easy part about this level is the Cyber Demon, since it can be cheesed and will be cheesed in this video. The second area of the map has this room with imps behind bars that you can't see, and there's a room with filled with many monsters. This level took me quite a lot longer than the rest of the levels in Sigil, which is a good metaphor since it's the level I'm going to talk about least, apart from the next level. Halls of Perdition I feel bad saying this, but Thy Flesh Consumes boss level was way better. There's way more buildup, and also some weird glitch with PR Boom Plus makes it so that when I kill the spider in this level, the level ends. What I think is happening is that Sigil was designed for episode 3, and when you kill the spider in E3M8, you end the level. I think that same concept applies to this level. Overall, this is definitely not the ending that Sigil deserves. Sigil is quite honestly a masterful reinterpretation of classic Doom that it takes what's old and puts a new spin on it. The fact that John Romero is still making more levels for classic Doom shows just how timeless the game actually is. I would also like to point out that apparently Sigil 2 has been announced and that Sigil 2 is going to use Doom 2 assets. I'm super excited for this and I will definitely play this as soon as it comes out. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'll see you all next time where I talk about the first person shooter game that changed everything. And from all of us here at the GMOD DW show... Happy, Happy Thanksgiving! Thanksgiving.
Ah! <laughs>